this podcast will be on Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. So a subject that I find very interesting about Wuthering Heights is that it's very obvious that this is not a romance novel. But love takes a very large part of it, and the relationship between two characters basically takes up half the book. But something that the audience begins to wonder when they're reading the book is whether or not the attraction between Heathcliff and Kathy is true love or nothing but obsession. Many times throughout the novel, you'll find the characters referring to the other as their soulmate or a literal part of their soul that makes up their life force relationship. Clearly, neither character can seem to live without the other. Even Kathy actually drives herself to be physically ill with the guilt that she married a man when she loved another. Then in response, Heathcliff doing anything to spite her, even if it made her furious as long as she was thinking about him, he disappears for three years or when he ran off and eloped with Edgar's younger sister, Isabella. Although they did have their sweet moments, like when they would sneak away to the moors to explore, or when he lay by her deathbed refusing to leave her side as she passed, there were also some truly disgusting moments as well. For example, when even years after her death, Heathcliff dug open her coffin from her grave in order to lay down beside her rotting corpse just to be able to once again feel what it was like to lie beside her. Not to mention that for years of their life since they were small kids, Heathcliff and Kathy were raised as siblings yet fell in love, a storyline that was also taken in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein between Victor and his sister Elizabeth. Even though in both stories they are not related by blood, it just still seems weird by today's standards. But all in all, love should make two people better and allow them to grow, but this relationship had quite the opposite effect. Their love made them spiteful, paranoid, self-centered, and obsessive and it made for an unhealthy obsession to avenge Kathy's death that Heathcliff devoted the rest of his life to, to the point when two decades of grief grief finally took him. The presence of multiple families, such as the Earnshaws, Catherines, Lintons, and Heathcliffs, creates a complexity in identifying familial ties, and quite conceptually, difficulty in identifying who's who in the novel to begin with. However, in the midst of all the complications mentioned in the novel, as Tori has mentioned, the display of the intricacy of love takes up major portions of the book. Despite the intense longingness present between Heathcliff and Catherine, a struggle present among the characters is the question of what is personal gain. Hence, What makes this classic all the more tragic is that the true sentiments of love masked by brutal measures to conceal what each individual truly desires is unattainable due to societal and internal household pressures. When Catherine confided in Nellie, it would degrade me to marry Heathcliff now, so he shall never know how I love him, and that not because he's handsome, Nellie, but because he's more myself than I am. Whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. It is portrayed here that Catherine is fooling herself to conform to societal expectations, considering her brother, Henley, has always casted Heathcliff down so low. While Catherine does indicate that she and Heathcliff are a match due to a resemblance in character for the sake of their childhood memories, Catherine chooses personal materialistic gain over her genuine feelings of love. With Heathcliff being powerless without his adoptive father, who is also Catherine and Henley's biological father, and upon taking it personally that Kathy believes that he degrades her status, it really serves as the point in which Heathcliff has had enough. Upon Heathcliff's irrationality of plotting revenge against Kathy and later avenging her death, it sets the example that pent-up sentiments of hatred, jealousy, and self-consciousness Henley and Heathcliff felt towards one another since the beginning of their encounter has led to the ultimate tragic downfall of one another and and to the people around. Denial to acceptance of one another has made them made those around them in the desolate withering heights to fear the authoritative nature of the barren home. Maybe this was all because it is true that blood is thicker than water? Heathcliff could have been viewed as a disruption to the Earnshaw household, a competitor, an intruder, because he was not blood-related, yet their father loved Heathcliff most. Perhaps it's possible that immature feelings of jealousy drawn from favorability during childhood brought about 
greater burdens in the hearts of Heathcliff, Catherine, and Henley. But most importantly, it shows us how passion and bitterness can drive a person to extreme behaviors. Thank you, Christina. And that would conclude our podcast on Wuthering Heights. And thank you to our listeners.